G'day everyone, B Agent Dad here. We're going to do the in-depth review of this Dell Latitude 7420. We're going to have a look at the features as well as the temperatures and fan noise and also the display and also have a quick peek of the internals and of course have a look at the performance of this computer as well. Now I've also done an unboxing video for the 7420 where I also compare it with the 7410, the, its predecessor. So I won't go through all of those topics again and if you haven't checked that video out, I'll put a link in the description below. You can check it out right after this if you want. Now I'll also be putting timestamps along this video so you can actually skip to the different sections that you may be interested. So we've got a lot to cover so I might quickly start off with what this computer can be configured with. Now as for the processor wise, it is using the 11th gen Intel Core and you can configure it with even i5 or an i7. Now as for RAM wise, it can go up to a maximum of 32 gigs. Now those 32 gigs is soldered to the system board so you need to make sure you select the correct one when you purchase this because you can't upgrade it later. As for storage wise you can take in one slot of M.2 NVMe SSD hard drive and as for display wise it can do full HD or a 4K as well. Now the new option in the full HD is a 400 nit of brightness. Now I do have that option into this particular unit, so we will investigate that a little bit later in the video. As for graphics wise, it is using the Intel integrated graphics. Now this is the Intel Iris XE, and it's actually not bad at all. And you'll see this in the performance of this computer here. And also it has Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1 as well. As for the webcam, there are two options. There's a 720p webcam, and now the new 1080p webcam. Yes, Dell finally listened to us and finally gave us a full HD webcam for all the content creations that we do and also better video conferencing as well. Now both the cameras do come with the privacy shutter so it's just a matter of a little flick of a switch at the top here and you also see a physical shutter go over it and you also see it go red so it just indicates that that webcam has now been disabled which is great to see so you don't need those sticky tape or even blue tack just to cover it which is great to see. Now it does come with proximity sensors as well and IR. Both of them do come with IR so infrared which means it can actually detect if you are there also when you wake the computer up it also turn the computer on or wake the computer up as well for the lid as well and you can as you walk away from the computer it also go to sleep or lock the computer out or and when you actually come back into view it also will wake the computer up as well. Now you can actually turn that on or off for the proximity sensor and through the Dell optimizer. This is a recording from the 1080p webcam from the Latitude 4220. This is the video and audio unedited so you can actually hear and see what the quality is like off this full HD camera. Now this full HD camera is new and I'm very excited by it. Now as always I've got two types of lights currently turned on. I've got one of my studio lights turned on and also the room lights turned on as well. So I'm going to turn off my studio light and you'll see this adjust for my ambient light. Now I've actually got four down lights currently turned on. I've got two in front of me and two behind me. Now hopefully you'll see this slowly adjust and the two in front of me, which is the down lights, are actually quite far away. So this is actually a very dark environment. So I'm doing the two extremes here. So I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about this full HD camera, how the video and audio is. So I'm going to turn on my Studio light back on so you see that adjust. Now, of course, with better lightning, it has a better picture. So, definitely love to hear your thoughts. Are. Put a comment below. Let's have a look at the ports. Starting on the left hand side of the computer, on the left, we have the USB Type C port, and that is the Thunderbolt 4 port, and it also supports power delivery. You can charge the laptop through this port here, and then we got the exhaust vent, and then a headphone jack, and then the optional smart card reader. And looking on the right hand side of the computer, starting on the right, we have the Noble Lock slots for security. And then we've got a full size HDMI port, which is version 2.0. And then we have a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, now that's USB Type A port. And that does support PowerShare. And then we got a USB C port, now that's also Thunderbolt 4 port. And you can charge the laptop through this port as well. And then we got the micro SD card reader and underneath is the optional USIM. When I tested out the temperatures and fan noise of this computer, when I put this computer on load, I found the hottest area is located near the top center of the keyboard, specifically around that where the Y key is, which is unsurprising because that's where the process lays underneath. Now when I've 
took the measurements for my ambient temperature was 24 degrees Celsius. So I took my base measurement when the computer was on idle and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 34 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it was 29 decibels at maximum. So it's pretty much quiet. Then I put the computer on 20% load. So that's pretty much what average use would be. So that's tasks like office productivity work, streaming videos, and surfing the web. And I found the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 36.5 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 31 decibels. So still pretty much quiet. Then I put the computer on 50% load and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 40 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it went up to a maximum of 33 decibel so you start here a fan very little bit then i put the computer at a hundred percent load and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 46 degrees celsius and as for the fan noise hit a maximum of 35 decibels so you do hear that fan go off a little bit but it's not really annoying at all and it's actually not high pitch neither i also measured the bottom back cover of the computer and the hottest area measured in at 47 degrees celsius and as for the fan noise of course still stuck at 35 decibels so i really wouldn't advise this computer to be putting your lap still have something separating between the laptop and your lap i really don't advise most of the laptops to be on your lap even though they call laptops anyway so maybe we should call them notebooks instead as they suggest i did compare the results of the temperatures and fan noise with the results from the latitude 7410 i did last year now having a quick look most of the temperatures and fan noise was practically the same. But I do want to make a note was that latitude 7410 that I did do was an I-5 and also the ambient temperature was 18 degrees Celsius. So it's about five degrees cooler. And also being an I-5, I expect the I-7 to really run hotter. To see that the temperatures and fan noise was practically nearly the same as there, which means I definitely say that the thermals on the Latitude 7420 definitely has improved. Let's have a look at the behavior of the processor. Now this Latitude 7420 is configured with an i7 1165G7. So having a quick look at the specs of this processor from the Intel website, we can see the base clock speed can be anywhere between 1.2 gigahertz to about 2.8 gigahertz, depending on how much power is available to it. Now in the Dell Latitude and Dell Precision for 2020 and 2021, we can actually change a little bit of that in the Dell Power Manager. Now, traditionally this is locked in BIOS, but now they've actually created an application which you can change this on the fly. And the one I was interested in is called Thermal Management. And I'm currently gonna set it to Ultra Performance. So this allows it to actually do the cooling and also gives it more power as well to the processor. So I'm basically trying to do the best it can to give it unlocking. So I'm, I'm expecting it closer to this 2.8 gigahertz for the base clock speed. But as long as it doesn't go below 1.2, I'm good. So at the moment, this computer has been running on load for both the processor, RAM and hard drive which is the SSD for over about two and a half hours now. And I can see it's pretty much got a very, very stable clock speed of 2.2 to about 2.8 gigahertz. Uh, it's mostly around about 2.5 is probably what you will average it at, but about 2.5 for the gigahertz. So that's a little bit below the 2.8, but still it is way above the 1.2 to gigahertz. So that's doing pretty well there. Let's have a look at the burst speed performance and behavior of this processor. So I'm gonna put this computer on load again. So that's processor, hard drive and RAM all at the exact same time. And also gonna start the stopwatch and we'll just see how this goes. So we've gone up to about four gigahertz here at the start and it's maintaining that 4.07 to 4.06 gigahertz. And We'll just quickly go back down to have a look at the timer there. And it's still maintaining after that 20 seconds. It's still keeping that four, above 4 gigahertz, which is good to see. And it's still sitting way up there. Now it's gone down to below 4 and it's just jumped itself back up to 4, which is good to see. And it's still going 
still maintaining quite high and now it's coming back down low there and that was around about around about 35 seconds I would probably say that was there and now we're starting to drop a bit so I'm just going to keep this running for about a minute so I can see how that performs and it is now getting closer hitting to about the 3 gigahertz there it's just hit 3 gigahertz at 1 minute mark and it's just dripping down it's just come back up again but that's kind of the performance we're seeing for this i7 and this is also running at ultra performance and I do have this computer plugged into mains power so it's not running off battery there the Latitude 7420 comes with a 65 watt power adapter and it's actually quite light and small as you can see and it comes out as USB-C so it charges the laptop via the USB-C port now this particular model comes with a battery of 63 watt hour battery which is a four cell and it does support rapid charge now what that means is it can charge the battery from 0 to 80% in one hour's time and it takes just about two hours to charge the battery from 0 all the way to 100. I did test out the battery life of this particular unit. Now, I did test it into four different modes. So in best performance mode, it managed to get two hours and 20 minutes. And in better performance mode, it managed to get three hours and 10 minutes. And in better battery mode, it managed to get four hours and 45 minutes. And in battery saving mode, it managed to get eight hours and 40 minutes. And in my media mode, it managed to get seven hours and 40 minutes. So it does a decent job. Now, all my testers are with very consistent workloads, of course. So you should be expecting a lot more better, better life than what I would be getting. I'm just getting at its worst possible situation. So most of the, your workload will go up and down for the processor, even for the RAM and hardware as well. But all of mine is pretty much a consistent workload there. It's just to give you kind of more of a worst case scenario. The weight of the Latitude 7420 is 1.3 kilos. Add in the 65 watt power adapter becomes a total weight of 1.63 kilos. I did perform the benchmarks for this particular 7420. Now this one is configured with an i7 1165G7 with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 SSD hard drive. And I'll put up the scores for Passmark, Citibench R15 and R23, PC Mark. 3D Mark, Crystal Disc Mark, MATLAB 2020B, Geek Bench, and Spec View Pref. I also throw in some game benchmarks as requested, like Assassin Creed Valhalla. Immortal Phoenix Rising and Far Cry New Dawn. This is the third computer that I've actually reviewed with the 11th gen Intel Core. Now, the one, the most similar that's to this one here that has the i7-1165G7 processor, it was the Dell XPS 139310. The Latitude 7420 did so well compared to the Dell XPS 13 that I review. It did so well that it actually nearly got caught up very similar to the MSI with the i7 11185G7 processor, which ran really, really hot. So I must admit that the thermals on this 7420 did extremely well compared to even the XPS 13. Now that one had a little bit of heating issues. This one does not have that heating issues. It definitely is a lot better in performance wise. As for the keyboard, you can get it configured with the backlights or non backlights. Now with the keys, each individual keys has a very nice smooth texture to it and it's got some nice spacing in between and it's got a bit of tactile feel to it which is quite nice and it's got a bit of key travel so you won't be too saddened by the key travel there. It's actually quite nice as well too. Now the keyboard is pretty standard for a uh, Latitude keyboard and it hasn't really changed since the last year's model and just to let you know that the power key is on the very right hand corner and the power key has integrated 
fingerprint reader if you have that option in. Now, as for the trackpad, again, it's really nice. It's got a nice glass feel to it. It's gone larger than the previous year uh, and also has multi gesture as well too and it's just a nice size i must submit so and it doesn't get too cumbersome where you accidentally press it uh, and it is hinged at the top and it's of course mechanical so you can press it down and of course it detects multi fingers and multi gesture as well too and as for the palm rest the texture of it is a bit of what you call very matte feel to it uh, and it's actually got quite a nice sort of enough spacing for your palm now i i do have quite small palms but i even i find it quite nice as well so you won't be having too much problem typing for very long hours as well too now as for the speaker wise there are two speakers located on the bottom front of the computer and when i tested out the maximum volume of the speakers it managed to peak at 78.1 decibels so that's decently loud and so if you go out in the field or even to outdoors and you're doing presentation it should be pretty ample enough to actually do your presentations you could be able to hear that as well now as for the sound quality wise it does have a little bit of bass um, not quite a lot but enough bass there to be kind of happy for even for a business laptop and it's got quite nice separation between the mids and highs and a little bit of the bass so there is nice separation acoustic wise is pretty much straight on front on and it doesn't actually distort too much which is fantastic uh, but really its strong point is its mids as you expect for a two speaker system let's have a look at internals now first off you just need to undo the screws on the back here and then you just need to pry it open my my advice for prying these ones open is go from the hinge and then you can either go to the center or the top I'll go from around this way here and then repeat on the other side from the hinge to the center and then around to the side and there you only really need to get up to here because after that you can pretty much just lift it this way here and then push it forward lift it that way and that's a lot easier to do so that is the internals here now I'm going to quickly show you dead in the middle is pretty much the M.2 SSD hard drive so it's just one slot over there that's where it is and then we've got the 63 watt hour battery here on the bottom here now it is connected by this connector here so if you need to reset the battery or just remove the battery for a while uh, this is just to pull that connector out there now also it is held in by a few screws I've pre undone them already just so you can see what is those underneath who are curious what's underneath the battery so that is kind of not really much to see underneath there so I'll just pop this one back down here now I can just show you quickly here is where you would put the WAN module as well too and as you can see we've got the new twin heat sink and that hasn't really changed it's still just twin but it just looks a bit different uh, but I can definitely tell you that the fan here is a little bit more larger than before and it is doing a pretty good job. This 7420 unit I have is configured with the new Full HD Comfort View 400 nits display. Now I'm going to actually quickly just test the, the brightness of this display with my X-Ray i1 display tool. And we are having a look at, it's currently reading at 428 calibre per screen. So one calibre per screen is cause one net of brightness. And we're up to about 428, which means it is past that 400, which is great to see. And I'm going to help the photographers and videographers. We're gonna look for that 110 to about 120. So I'm just gonna use this dial, which is the in the brightness display settings. And if you just wanna right click and go display settings you'll get this and I'll just make sure you turn this function off which is change brightness automatically we don't really want that we actually want to set this manually now I've found around about the 26 value here you'll get about 111 and at 27 you get 114 29 you get kind of a little bit past so at 20 123 but at 28 looking about 119 calendar per screen minute. So just to let you know, that's the sort of setting you'll be neat looking at for photography and biography for this display. Measuring the color gamut coverage of the new full HD 400 nits comfort view display, we've got 97.2% sRGB coverage, we've got 71.1% Adobe RGB coverage, and 73.1% DCI P3 coverage.
I color calibrated the full HD 400 nits display using my XYI1 display tool. Now I'm just going to show you what it looks like out of factory with display and after calibration. So this is out of factory and this is after calibration. So I kind of can see that it's gone a little bit more greener in tinge and also it's very slightly a little bit more warm as well. So this is out of factory after calibration. So I'm just going to switch this one to midtones. So out of factory after calibration. Out of factory after calibration. And just going to also bring in a colored version of this picture. So out of factory after calibration. So it's only very slightly there. And I'm going to bring in a black and white high key tone. So out of factory after calibration. Out of factory after calibration. And I'll bring in a mid-tone one as well. Out of factory after calibration. So definitely in the black and white mid-tones you can definitely see the big change there as well too. And also I might as well just do the low key. Black and white out of factory after calibration. Not too much difference there. But just to let you know now if you are serious about colors, I do advise you to get your own color calibration tool. It is a lifesaver. Overall, the Dell Latitude 7420, I can recommend. It has a very good build construction. It is quite durable as well. It has good keyboard, good trackpad as well. And it's good to hear that Dell is listening to us for better display and the upgraded webcam, of course. And it has a very good thermals as well as keeping fan noise quite to the minimum as well. And there's a lot of options for it in terms of configuring wise and as for the performance, that's fantastic as well. So if you find this video informative or enjoyed it or even to support my channel, smack that like button for me. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel as well. It's if I hit that subscribe button on the screen, I do try to a new video every week. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.